All right. In this video, we derive the normal distribution, univariate normal distribution, uh, by using the principle of maximum entropy, assuming that we already know the mean and the variance of the distribution, but nothing else. Okay, let's start. So first of all, let's assume we have some probability density function defined on the entire real space. Okay, and uh, assume that we know the mean and the variance are known. Well, for variance, we usually write sigma squared, but for this purpose, it's a kind of awkward, so we use V instead. For the continuous distribution, we define the entropy as this, negative, and so from negative infinity to positive infinity, rho of x log of rho of x dx. So we integrate this function over entire uh, real numbers. Uh, this might seem a bit strange because the density is not probability. Density is inside the logarithm. But uh, this works for continuous distribution. So please just accept it for a moment. And of course, since this is a density function, this rho is a density function, we have this normalization condition. So if we just integrate this, we get 1. And we're assuming the mean and the variance, they are known. So if we calculate the mean, so x times rho of x and integrate it, it should be equal to mu. And if we integrate uh, this x minus mu squared, times rho of x, it should be equal to the variance. So we have these three constraints. Uh, and that should be used to maximize this entropy. So let's set up the Lagrangian for this uh, optimization problem. So let's say L is, you know, we just skip these uh, limits for integrals and just write like this, log rho log rho dx and Lagrange multiplier alpha for the normalization, rho dx minus 1, and another multiplier uh, for the mean, x rho dx minus mu, and another multiplier, gamma, for the variance. OK, so we want to maximize this. So uh, in the case of discrete distribution, we could just differentiate this function with respect to each of the probability uh, measure. But uh, now we have a function here. So this L is not a function, but it's a functional. So it's a functional is a function of a function. That means it's different from a composite function, but it so if we determine an entire function, the functional gives one value. And if we give another distribution, then the functional will give another value. So we need to define entire function over entire domain uh, to determine a value of this uh, functional. OK, so how can we maximize this? If you have studied uh, Lagrangian or Hamiltonian mechanics, maybe it's familiar to you. So we use a technique called functional differentiation. So this L is a functional. So L is a functional of rho. Okay? So if we give a rho a function, then this L of rho gives a value. Okay? So if we want to differentiate it, we change rho to rho of x to some different function, rho plus delta rho of x. So this function, this is a new function, which is a little bit different from rho. Okay? That difference is represented by this delta rho. So if we substitute this thing into this right-hand side, then what would happen? Let's see. OK, so we look at each term in turn. OK, so first we have rho log rho. OK, so if we substitute this rho with rho plus delta rho, 
then we have uh, row plus delta row and log of row plus delta row. Uh, so let's simplify this a little bit. And uh, first, this log part. Okay, so row, delta row. And let's see, log. So inside this, we have 1 plus delta row over row. Okay, then split this logarithm. And log of row plus uh, log of 1 plus delta row over row. Okay, we are assuming that this delta row is very small compared to row itself. So we can apply uh, Taylor approximation, first order Taylor approximation. So let's try this. And uh, that will give us log row plus. So if you expand this, this is del just simply delta row over row. Okay, now expand this again, and we have this part this and row log row and this and this delta row and this and this we have delta row log row and this times this we have delta row squared over row now okay, uh, wait a minute this should be uh, not equal but uh, approximate now this last term is second order in delta row, which is supposedly very small compared to other terms, okay? So this has no delta row, and this and this, they have one first order term of delta row. So compared to these terms, this last term is very small, so we may just ignore them, ignore it, okay? So if we take the difference, so between, uh, L of rho plus delta rho minus L of rho, and, and only cons uh, considering this entropy term. So this term will be gone because uh, this is al also contained in this uh, uh, L of rho. Okay, so the, what's remaining is these terms. Okay, so from this we have uh, integral of delta delta rho, and 1 plus log of rho dx. Okay, so this comes from the entropy term, entropy term alone. Okay, uh, we have a negative sign, by the way. And now let's consider the uh, this normalization term. So that's easy. So it's just uh, integral of rho dx, so just consider uh, changing this rho with rho plus delta rho. And if we take the difference between a uh, non-perturbed uh, version, then this will be gone. And then we have just negative alpha and delta rho dx, okay, from the normalization term. And for the mean term, so we have this beta and uh, x rho dx. So if we change this rho to delta rho, we have uh, x rho plus delta rho, and uh, if we take the difference between this and this, then this will be gone, and we have negative beta and x and delta rho dx. And then uh, the variance term, so we have gamma x minus mu squared and rho dx, so we change this term to rho plus delta rho, then what's remaining is uh, this, x minus mu squared delta rho. Okay, so to summarize, if we calculate L of rho plus delta rho minus L of rho, then we have the following. Oh, wait a minute. Before that, let's put, uh, for the sake of uh, uh, simplicity, we put 
1 over 2 here. Uh, so gamma over 2. So gamma is a constant, so gamma over 2 is a constant. So it doesn't matter much, but uh, for later purpose, it's better to put uh, 1 over 2. Anyway, so this becomes a negative uh, integral of delta rho, and everything uh, can be factorized. Log of rho plus 1 plus alpha plus beta x plus gamma over 2x minus mu squared and dx. Okay. So at the maximum point of this Lagrangian, we expect that this should be 0 because you know if we change this row a little bit, then the value of this fun functional shouldn't change much. So that means this is equal to 0. That means, but this delta rho is arbitrary, right? So it can be any, any small perturbation added to uh, the distribution function. So for this to hold, then inside this bracket should be equal to 0. Okay, that means we have log rho plus 1 plus alpha plus beta x plus gamma over 2x minus mu squared is equal to 0. So solving this for rho, rho of x, we have exponential of uh, negative of this, right? Negative 1 minus alpha minus beta x minus gamma over 2x minus mu squared. But this term, uh, one, mi 1 plus alpha, it's a constant, so we just... Uh, expressed, you know, factorize this out and uh, just squash into a constant C. It's exponential of negative beta x minus gamma over 2 and this. And furthermore, since we have x here and x here, let's complete the square inside the uh, exponent. And if we do that, we have gamma over 2 and x minus mu and that should be, uh, what is it, plus beta over gamma squared. And there should be some constant term, but we redefine this constant c uh, and uh, combine them to, uh, to this c, okay? So this c and this c, they are different, but it's a, just a constant. Now, let's first determine this constant C. So first constraint is this. Rho of x dx is equal to 1. So if we integrate this, so substitute this into here, and integrate this, we have, so it's a, it's a, you know, it's a Gaussian integral. So if we integrate this, this should be equal to, uh, let's see, uh, it should be square root of, Oops. It should be square root of uh, 2 pi uh, over gamma, right? So, so this should be equal to 1. Therefore, uh, C is equal to square root of gamma over 2 pi. You know, initially we had uh, the Lagrangian multi Lagrange multiplier, alpha, but we are not really interested in the value of alpha, per se. We are interested in determining the distribution. So, you know, we don't have to know the explicit value of alpha, but, you know, we are just satisfied with this constant, okay? So now we have this density. Uh, rho of x is equal to square root of gamma over 2 pi and exponential of this. Uh, gamma over 2, x minus mu plus beta over gamma squared. Now, let's determine the value of beta uh, from this constraint. Rho, uh, x times rho of x dx is equal to mu. So mu is a given uh, known value of the mean. Now we uh, substitute this to here. And if we integrate this, uh, of course, this is a Gaussian integral, so we know the result. 
and that should be equal to mu plus beta over gamma. So this should be equal to mu, but you know this mu and this mu they cancel out. So beta should be zero as expected. Now, since beta is equal to zero, uh, the density function becomes this. Uh, exponential of uh, one, wait a minute, one uh, gamma over two, and this squared. Okay, now let's apply the third constraint, that is x minus mu squared and rho of x dx, which should be equal to v. But again, this is a Gaussian integral, so we know the answer. So this should be uh, 1 over gamma, right? So 1 over gamma is equal to v. That means gamma is equal to 1 over v. Okay. So if we substitute this, substitute this into here, we get rho of x equal to, uh, wait a minute, gam we have gamma here also. So that's 1 over 2 pi v exponential of negative uh, x minus mu squared over 2 v, as expected. So this is the normal distribution, right? So this is v, which usually is uh, written as uh, sigma squared. So sigma squared here. So this is the usual appearance of the normal distribution. So we have learned that the normal distribution can be obtained from the maximum entropy principle with a known mean and a variance. So that means uh, the most ignorant guess of a probability distribution, uh, I mean, defined on an entire real uh, space, is the Gaussian or normal distribution. Okay, if we know the values if we happen to know the values of the mean and the variance. Okay, that's it. See you later.